Rain. And we have Matthew Brodsky joining us to break this down. He is a senior fellow at the Gold Institute for International Strategy. So, Matthew, you know, what is the world, or what is the word right now in Washington? What is the reaction to this deal? Well, if you're on the Republican side of the aisle, it's 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 extremely huge news, uh, and it's something that the administration has been working on for for quite some time. And they preferred to, of course, have had this happen about a year or so ago, but there were several elections inside of Israel, and then the pandemic, which pushed off the release of the peace plan. Now, if you're on the left uh, side of the aisle, then there are those who are still kind of welcoming this as news uh, and see it as a good development. But at the same time, those to the further left and the more progressive side of American politics see anything that happens with Israel as, frankly, uh, bad. So it's really up to how you view things through your political kaleidoscope as to what you make of this news. So to what extent do you think that Trump can be credited for making these deals with the UAE and Bahrain? I mean, Israel and the Gulf states have been getting closer for years now, even if it's been in secret. Right. I mean, look, one of the major uh, things that propelled this forward was, ironically, uh, the outcome of Obama's foreign policy, which was to strengthen Iran and the Muslim Brotherhood that brought Israel and the Gulf Arab states specifically far closer together. And that was, of course, by accident. Now, what this administration did that is much different than uh, previous administrations and previous attempts at peace was they did focus in on an outside in approach. They had their hand open for Palestinian negotiators to get into negotiations with Israel. That was what they hoped would happen. But at the same time, they were not going to allow the rest of the region uh, to be held hostage to Palestinian rejectionist demands. Uh, and instead sought to engage the rest of the region. That has actually paid dividends, especially if you consider that most of the previous peace processors, those who worked on this as a career in multiple administrations, they've all said that this type of thing was impossible. So it was a fresh set of eyes and new ideas, and I think we're seeing it pay off now. So the U.S. presidential elections are quickly approaching. November is almost here. If Trump is reelected, who do you think is next to normalize ties with Israel? Or does Trump even need to be a part of it? Could this continue without him in power? Good, good question. I think this type of movement is the kind of fact on the ground that makes it far more difficult uh, to just rein back. Even if, say, Biden were elected, the fact is this is a good move for the region and it's good for the United States, mm -hmm. especially if the U.S. wants to continue to pull back from the region. If you recall, uh, President Trump's viewpoint was to originally create uh, what he called the Middle East Strategic Alliance, kind of a Arab NATO that would deal with the region's problems as the U.S. pulled back. Now, while that may not have come to its full fruition, this type of deal by the U.S. relying on allies who think alike and have common interests to deal with the problems in their own region is precisely what the Trump administration wants to see. And it's hard to how a Biden administration would be against that. It's only in the United States if you were to be uh, heavily influenced by, say, Rashida Tlaib or under uh, Ilhan Omar or the far more progressive wing of the Democrat Party. Uh, but this is, it's going to be kind of hard to stop this train. Also, I should mention, the message is unmistakable, even if the Palestinians don't necessarily want to let on that this is exactly what they're hearing. They are seeing that the region is moving forward without them. So the idea is they need to seize the moment uh, and they can't just rely on everyone else delivering right. things for them. Well, I guess our next interview is going to be about that, how they can seize the moment. Matthew Brodsky, thank you so much for joining us and breaking that down so succinctly. All right.